Ooh. Yo, what's the deal, guys? I'm um, back with another reaction video. Oh, it's SpongeBob Conspiracy. Number one, the Squilly on Theory. Uh, there's probably like five of these, I think, total. I can't remember, so I'm gonna do one. Probably do another one tomorrow, maybe tonight, or after this one. But uh, yeah, if I feel or sound different, yeah, I was like, I feel like I caught something. Like this morning, I woke up feeling like crap. Not, not lying. My nose was running. My throat was hurting. But I'm feeling somewhat better. Like my nose not running as much, and my throat, like the soreness in my throat, is going away. So, um, yeah, hope you're having a good day too, by the way. And I'm chilling. If it's loud in here, in the background, you know, the fans are on, so. It's hot today. Let's get to this. Alex Bell, by the way, if you want to watch these videos, I'm putting the description down below too. William Francis in the third is Squidward's rival from high school band class. So, the second. I just took my private yacht across my private plane to my private heliport. He's more wealthy, popular, and talented than Squidward, and he always rubs it in his face. That's right. I'm living your dreams, Squidward. All just succeeding in everything you failed in. But I intend to prove that he's a fool, using his wealth to make himself seem more popular and talented than he actually is. He goes to ridiculously extreme and expensive lengths to humiliate Squidward and show his superiority, and I'm going to prove it. SpongeBob is one of my favorite shows from my childhood. Even going back now and rewatching the old ones, it still holds up. You might think, it's just a kid's show, there's no continuity, there's nothing worth theorizing about, but the show constantly brings back characters and references to previous episodes. And if you look closely, you can... I know this, yeah, I know it's that too, but it's must probably been going on since 1999, you guys. Like, and it's still running. I bet you if you go to Nickelodeon Studio or whatever, I bet SpongeBob has its own floor. Like, you know, different levels to it, but SpongeBob got his own floor. Crazy. I can talk to find some very interesting stories. And today, I'm going to prove that William Francis III is a secular fraud. He's a beat. We first meet William in season two, episode fifteen, Fan Geeks. One of the best episodes. We were playing the clarinet and getting a knock on the door. Yeah, uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street, and I understand you have a dying animal on the premises. Immediately after, Squiver gets a call from Squiller. Hello, you've reached the house of unrecognized talent. Please start after the... Sounds as though you've got a dying animal to attend to. Hey, old chum. I believe that not only was Squilliam spying on Squidward to know when he was playing his clarinet, but he also hired the doctor to come in and bear Squidward. Yeah, uh, Man, I'm like, bro, you just wake up. Wake up and thinking about me or something? Weirdo. Or you're sending motherfuckers to my house and shit. Like, bro. Squidward needs a... Uh, Whoop his ass. <laughs> he do something. Like, leave me alone. We've only ever seen just the regular Bikini Bottom hospital. Right. He's purple doctor fish before, but once again, he's never worked at a pet hospital. We've only ever seen him at the regular general hospital. Well, Mr. Squarepants, it seems you have the suds. Ready for your treatment? Then there's this green fish behind him, and we've only ever seen him as one of the many paramedics, paramedics that work at the Bikini yeah. Bottom hospital. We even see him at the end of the episode to take Squilliam away after fainting. <laughs> so it is very likely that Squilliam hired these two and told them to pretend like they're from a pet hospital just to keep him But this is just the start of Squilliam's elaborate lies. In the same episode, Squilliam also says, I'm the leader of a big fancy band now, and we're supposed to play the Bubble Bowl next week. The problem is, I'm busy next week and can't make it, so I was hoping you and your bands could cover for us. But we've never seen Squilliam's band before. And despite claiming he's too busy to make it to the Bubble Bowl, he still shows up at the end to watch Squidward's band. So both his excuse and probably his band <laughs> were made up to pressure Squidward into humiliating himself at the Bubble Bowl. evidence of three Squilliam's friends. 
In season three, episode eight, Squilliam returns. Squidward leaves for work and conveniently bumps into Squilliam and all of his fancy friends, despite Squilliam not seeming like the kind of guy that would come near the Krusty Krab. He and his friends make fun of Squidward for working as a cashier. Hold it! Don't tell me! You're a cashier! <laughs> planned out by Squilliam in advance, and he hired all of those people to pretend to be his friends. Take a look at Squilliam's friends. They're all nicely dressed, you kind of get the sense that they're fancy, high-status members of Bikini Bottom, but they aren't. This is more like what the fancy, rich people in Bikini Bottom look like. These are just some regular Bikini Bottom citizens. Oh yeah, let's drive it for it. Nice like this. And most of them are regulars at the Bikini Bottom, and we're already no sort of a cashier. Why is so small? I mean, why would Squilliam be hanging out with one of Pearl's teenage friends? At the end of the episode, Squilliam even admits to his whole life being fake. I made everything up about my life. I have no yachts, jets, or anything. I was only trying to impress you. And then, of course, he quickly says he's just kidding. Is that true? Of course not! I felt he's taken <laughs> red! But was he kidding? I mean, obviously, he's rich, but... Is there a nugget of truth in there? The statue. In season seven, episode six, Squidward has to pick up trash for community service, and Squilliam once again conveniently bumps into him and reveals he's cleaned up so much trash that the city actually built a statue of him. Maybe if you clean up the key bottom, they'll build a statue of you. Oh wait, they've already built one of me. <laughs> All the bikini bottom in only one week. I believe that once again, this is... Nigga, you clean a whole city in one week? Cut the bullshit. Nobody can't do that. Now, Nobody. And he actually paid I don't think everybody in the whole city could do that. Squidward about the statue, a female fish admires it and says, but if you remember, this is one of those <laughs> friends <Squidward> face. <laughs> like face making her whole comic feel very fake. By the end of the episode, Squilliam's statue gets destroyed. A police officer approaches and they have this exchange. This is your statue. Wow. That is statue Mel. Squilliam admits that it's his statue, not the city's. And why else would the officer hmm. give him specifically a ticket if it was city property? <laughs> In season six, episode 17, Squidward watches Squilliam play the clarinet at a big fancy concert. He receives a standing ovation, causing Squidward to leave angrily. But I believe this entire concert is a scam. Not only has the audience been paid to cheer, but Squilliam never even touches his instrument. Once again, many of the audience members were part of Squilliam's quote-unquote friends. But we also never actually see Squilliam play the clarinet. The episode opens right after he's finished his performance with the audience cheering, and one member of the audience said, He's such a great musician. He doesn't even have to touch an instrument to be brilliant. Maybe the real reason Squibber leaves so angrily is because the audience cheered for Squilliam even though he never even touched his clarinet. Maybe Squilliam is just as bad as Squibber at the clarinet and he's trying to hide it. Squilliam has gone to some pretty extreme lengths just to humiliate Squibber, but nothing, and I mean nothing, compares to what he does next. Evidence number six, the music hall. In the same episode, after Squidward leaves the concert, he's approached by the headmistress of the Bikini Bottom prestigious music college. Oh, to the esteemed Squilliam Fancy Sin the Third, who we all came here to see perform tonight. She mistakes him for Squilliam and offers him a position as a professor. Squidward pretends to be Squilliam and teaches a class, only for the police to burst in and arrest him, all while he's being filmed on live TV. And I believe that this is Squilliam's most elaborate and most expensive scheme to destroy Squidward both publicly and legally. This encounter where Squidward gets offered a job is already suspiciously convenient, but listen closely to their exchange. But didn't you just say a minute ago that your name was Squidward Q Tentacles? It is. No, I mean, uh, no, no, I didn't. Well, that's a relief. I mean, what kind of a moron would go to their worst enemy's music recital? What kind of moron would go to their own enemy's music recital? How does she know that Squidward and Squilliam are enemies? If she knew who Squidward was, then why didn't she recognize him? Why would she mistake him for Squilliam? This feels way too much like she was hired by Squilliam to set a trap for Squidward. And if that's not enough, the headmistress's associate is literally just a guy from the paid audience wearing a disguise. 
He just threw on some glasses to seem smart. <laughs> it's really a new that Scoobert couldn't resist the opportunity to teach a music class, even if it meant breaking the law. My very own music class. Then we get to the Bikini Bottom prestigious music college, and right off the bat, there's something very fishy about this place. The building itself is very green and grimy, and has a very cheap metal look. Nothing about this says prestigious, Parking except for the big here. sign on uh, top, which feels like the only new thing about this building. I think there is a very good chance that Squilliam just bought some old warehouse and stuck a sign and some paint on it to disguise it as a college. I mean, look at these other schools in Bikini Bottom. They all have a very nice structure and a paint it's job. It's a small high this school. prestigious music college looks like a dumpster. Going into the classroom, not only does it have another one of Squilliam's friends, but if this is such a prestigious college, how did SpongeBob and Patrick get in here? Would you two numbskulls mind telling me what you're doing in music class anyway? Sure. Patrick New Year's resolution was to learn to play an instrument. They say it was their New Year's resolution to take a music class, but you'd think it'd be harder for them to get into an esteemed music school if they just decided to go to it on a whim. Seems like they're just letting in anyone to sell this ruse. Then, both the police, Squilliam and the headmistress, and a live news broadcast show up at the same time to arrest Squidward for impersonating Squilliam. If the extremely coincidental fact that all of these Dang, he still got the same suit the same on time, is it enough for you to believe that Squilliam set it all up? I've got something that's going to blow your mind. Let's hear it. Squilliam literally has the police working for him. Squidward <laughs> Jew tentacles, I'm placing you under arrest for impersonating a genius. If that doesn't sound like he's been paid off, I don't know what does. The what about the police that gave the citation? Squidward are insane. He literally built statues and entire buildings just to make Squidward feel inferior. But why? Why would anyone go so far to embarrass an old high school band classmate? What happened between them? What could have caused this extreme level of dedication? Well, unfortunately, we never really get much information on their past. I've spent hours reading through the SpongeBob Wikipedia and the Maniacs. episodes, and there really just isn't any clues that would explain their weird relationship. I guess we can't solve everything, but either way, that's my theory. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Wait a second. Oh. Wait a second. Wait. Season 6, episode 5, Slide Whistle Stupid. All right. Just a normal episode where SpongeBob and Patrick and always Squidward. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Except I have one question about this episode. Why does Squidward have Squilliam's robe? That is clearly not the purple robe he usually wears. That is Squilliam Fancy Son the Third. Oh, robe. what the heck? Why would Squidward have this? Ew. What are y'all doing? They were more than just classmates. They have once been. No way. That's not possible. There's, there's no evidence to support that. Right? No. It can't be. I mean, what kind of moron would go to their woods and then he's losing to himself? He's been right in front of this whole time. Our sources last saw people harassing teenagers on that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> hey, what you guys think? Let me know. Alright, deuces.